look, do look to nature uh, for solutions to uh, design problems. And again, uh, just just mileage, you know, especially right now, like I say, just draw, 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 just get them out, get out your ideas. Uh, it's about, it's about yes, not about no. And what I say by that is, is just keep drawing, keep putting more shapes down on the paper. Um, don't edit yet, you know, um, really throw it all against the wall. Just throw it all against the wall and see what sticks. Some will, some won't. Uh, don't be afraid to, to sort of, I guess, be silly, um, especially in your own sketchbook. Again, remember, <clears throat> excuse me, this is for yourself. This is, uh, this is internal. So if anything, anything, you're going to be benefiting from this and having nothing to lose. So really, really do take the time to, uh, to go through and, uh, and just do these doodles. And right now what you basically want to do is you want to look at these things and and sort of see them as having anatomical parts, you know. I mean, it's here is a whole figure and uh in this figure it's broken up with uh a head, a torso, appendages, you know. Uh so in that way, um you start connecting everything and you can't separate a limb, you know, so I, let me just slow down here. Uh, a werewolf arm, for instance, would not look good <laughs> on a, uh, a six-year-old girl with a, um, you know, little sort of po-peep outfit. It just will not work. It'll visually be strange. Well, in that same way, I know that's a, a very uh, odd and sort of drastic um, example, but I use it to exaggerate my point, uh, and that is that it's, it's, this is the same thing. Um, these shapes are all related to each other, and you have to think in that way. So, and what I say by shapes being related to each other, and let, let me, uh, let me slow, slow down even more, and uh, just break this stuff up, really dissect it. And what we are playing with are shapes, you know. We have square, triangle, circle, rectangle. And a shape, being in a closed area, really just having properties of 2D. Um, and here, here we are, you know, these shapes, for all intents and purposes, appear flat. Um, and then 3D is merely depth, depth giving a volume to that space then elicits that sensation of form, thus giving us 3D. Ah, dun da 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 So this square no longer just is a square, it becomes a box, a triangle becomes a cone, a circle can become a sphere, etc., etc. So, looking at these shapes, inevitably, you know, we can see them as forms, but for right now, um, we really really want to keep things simple and look at things in their simple statements you know don't get bogged down by the detail and that is to say this has really no surface elements it's just really a smattering of lines but I can get out of it a, sen a sense of a freighter ship and I can certainly start seeing geometry um, and then Inevitably, we're going to apply values and colors and textures um, to to really sell these shapes. But right now, really, that's just what these are, are just shapes. So, when I, uh, when I start off, I, I'll even sometimes uh, just work in flats. And what I, what I mean to say when I say flats 
is uh, going back to a, the 2D property of things. Um, really, really pairing things back so that I have um, really just a, 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 the, the most effective use of my um, design capacity. And I really only want to work on design problems and not perspective problems in the beginning. Um, so again, you know, just uh, just start things slowly, uh, and uh, as you build confidence, uh, you can start developing uh, these things further out in your mind. But uh, other things that I would uh, do too, uh, along with word associations, um, if I'm having a um, a dry spell, or if, or if things are just sort of too flat, you know, a design can be flat as well. Um, and uh, if it's just or just sort of you know too routine or or just too mundane for myself, then uh, I'll just uh, sort of stir it up and take a look around the house and sort of turn it into what I inevitably want to see out of it. But you know, a, a grandfather clock no longer stays a grandfather clock. It could be a really uh, imposing, menacing, uh, futuristic ship. Uh, quite alien, actually, uh, once you take it out of its everyday uh, setting. So in that way, you know, a mountain no longer becomes a mountain, a skyscraper no longer becomes a skyscraper, a uh, caterpillar no longer becomes a caterpillar, etc., etc. So that's that's yet another technique that I would uh, have you guys uh, definitely explore. Um, and uh, do, do take this seriously. I mean... You know, it's, it sort of seems like child's play, but um, this stuff is really effective, and and I, I can assure you that uh, that some um, quality uh, quality uh, designs that have graced uh, your very precious childhood memories, uh, perhaps even, have uh, probably been uh, attacked in this sort of same way. But. Uh, and I, I hope that you guys will see this effective for yourselves, too. But uh, anyways, and you can't avoid it. Perspective, perspective, perspective. This is an industrial design class. And yes, um, the uh, merits of your design for these things are going to uh, be judged uh, in conjunction with uh, your ability to depict them, to draw them, to, to, to render them onto this page, onto this paper, onto this 2D surface. So... Uh, Really become aware of how to um, how to affect the phenomena of 3D onto that that flat paper surface, and hopefully these handouts will uh, will help. And uh, I've got this actually from a um, a great book that I uh, I keep very close to my hip, um, especially when doing uh, these, these industrial design type uh, drawings. is uh, it's, it's called Perspective Drawing. Uh, it's a uh, a huge sort of Walter Foster book, and uh, it's written by Ernest Norling, and I, I think it might be slightly difficult to get a hold of, so sorry about that, guys, but I don't think impossible to find uh, this, this day and age, this day in Amazon age, so uh, I would would advise you guys to look for it, but really, honestly, any, any good, solid perspective for artists or for illustrators' book uh, would would really be uh, beneficial, if not essential, for this class. So, so do pick one up. Uh, also, too, there is another book that I really, really quite like. Um, and uh, the author escapes me right now, and I will get the author to you as soon as I can. But the name of the book is uh, Rapid Viz. And uh, it's Rapid Viz with a Z at the end. It's just a really great book, and it uh, actually probably even more eloquently, definitely more eloquently, will um, talk about some of these ideas that uh, I'm uh, hope, you know, hopefully not introducing you completely to, but uh, if I am, hey, great, you know, more bang for your buck. Um, but definitely that book is, uh, is worth picking up as well because uh, it just is a, uh, an exceptional book and, and really is a lot of fun and um, is a great great uh, way to uh, expand your, your creative uh, ex exercises uh, and techniques. So anyways, let me uh, move on. Okay.
Okay, another thing that I want to also uh, begin to talk about is um, character and attitude. Uh, and I really want you guys to think of these things, these ships, as having just those characters and attitudes. Um, and we're going to elicit those characters and attitudes um, by way of forms and shi shapes uh, initially. Um, and, you know, I mean, these forms, these shapes, they really do have an, an intrinsic sort of character to them. And um, I want you guys to be aware of that. I want you guys to imagine a box as being slow moving. Um, and I want you guys to imagine a triangle as being able to sort of dart through space fairly quickly. And when you think in that way, it sort of gives you a, um, a way to, uh, to approach this, you know. It sort of becomes less ethereal, I guess. And out of the mist and out of the fog start coming these forms, start coming uh, these shapes. And then inevitably out of that... Uh, it, you know, your your ship is uh, chiseled out. So start first with shapes, merely shapes, merely forms, just almost um, guttural. Uh, your guttural sort of reaction, your initial reaction to what these uh, designs ought to look like in the end is uh, what we're aiming to do with these thumbnails. And... Um, other things that you can do, uh, inevitably, and I won't get into it, this too much, but uh, scale. Um, having a human uh, in your uh, design, or along with your design, at least in your mind, uh, will help sort of sell the, the believability and the reality of this ship. So that is also another technique you can also implore uh, early on. Um, and looking at various insects, insect types, uh, and just their sort of arrangement and their profile, their posture, their shape, I really am able to glean a lot from that. So um, that's yet another thing that you can do as well. Um, let's see here. Also, back to perspective. Um, and, and specifically now, when doing these thumbnails, if you are going to do um, any push perspective, really keep things uh, sort of simple and readable. That's, that's our goal. Make things clear and readable, understandable, relatable, at least if that's that what the uh, design task is. If it's an alien ship, then perhaps maybe not so relatable. But again, I'll leave that sort of to you. Um, as that is a, uh, a, 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 a design range that you can uh, encompass within your, uh, within your thumbnails for these ships as well. Uh, but again, um, so when you are initially placing your perspective lines, and I'll, I'll go through that in a, in a quick second. Um, in a, uh, I'll, I'll go through a uh, series of these thumbnails in, in a moment. But uh, when you lay in your, your initial perspective lines, um, I want you to be sure to sort of place them, your vanishing points, far enough away from each other um, that you will be able to get a sort of good read on an angle of your ship. And you can see how, if you don't do that, how if you place your vanishing points too close, the extremity of which you're going to have to then depict your final design within that picture plane, it just becomes too extreme uh, and too sort of foreign from our standard, everyday uh, way of seeing the world. Um, this is better, but uh, it's still maybe not the best uh, resolution as it's a bit too centered and um, just sort of, you know, for lack of a better word, boring. 
and that is not what we want to do. We do not want to bore. We want to entertain. We are in the entertainment business, so let's do just that. But uh, all joking aside, um, all corny, horrible jokes aside, um, let us let us let us get into it. Let us do our thumbnails. So I will uh, pause this and see you on the flip side. And now on to another one. Uh, I really quickly want to also just stress perspective. It, it really starts with uh, good drawing and uh, assessing perspective in, in, a, in the right way uh, is just going to benefit you uh, when, when doing these little thumbnails. So uh, just take your time, plot your points, uh, and uh, map out your coordinates, and, and uh, just basically put your ship into the paper. Um, using simple, clean construction lines first, uh, establishing your major forms. Uh, and I know I'm going to, again, just stick to that box form uh, because it, it's eliciting uh, the, uh, the appropriate sort of tone uh, or feeling uh, for this uh, ship construction. And uh, let me briefly also talk about breaking up uh, your design in um, a series of big, medium, and small shapes. Uh, or forms as well. Um, and uh, here I'm doing just that. I know I've got my primary form as the box, so I've indicated the uh, that major form first. Um, and within that box, I'm now using um, all of my uh, various features that are going to make up the whole ship design and um, laying them in in a way where there is an interesting sort of breakup of space um, and it's really it, it sort of comes down to how you're going to juggle um, your big and your medium and your small shapes um, and you can see I'm doing just that I'm just really trying to uh, figure out an arrangement of all of these uh, elements um, that are sort of pleasing I guess if you will um, and unpleasing uh, for the sake of this ship specifically because uh, there's sort of a, a non-beauty that is um, a part of the look. Um, when, uh, when stuff is uh, more function-based, it really uh, is just sort of constructed with a, um, a spirit of complete practicality. There's such a... a pragmatic sense of, uh, uh, I guess, a pragmatic sort of heart to the, uh, to the construction that uh, there's really no time or energy spent wondering if it, in fact, is pretty, you know, and, and that actually is kind of what is eliciting uh, this, uh, this thing, this ship, uh, feeling a bit more sort of governmental or a bit more industrial in occupation. Uh, this certainly is not a, a luxury cruise liner, for instance. Uh, so again, just just even if it's just that, eliciting that feeling, I mean, that's really what we're going for with these doodles. Um, but again, um, it's uh, it all should sort of be pleasing to the eye. Uh, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're designing, uh, hopefully, an, an eloquent uh, resolution uh, to these design problems. So, um, again, just uh, think about your primary forms and uh, just make sure that you don't get too bogged down by the details right now and they are sort of adding to the overall design and not taking away from. So having done a number of these uh, thumbnails, I think I'm going to move on to a uh, sort of more pulled in view and uh, might assess these as a side view right now and just going back to a, a simple flat. Uh, I want to relate everything so I'm sort of using a draw through method in which um, I just want every part to relate to the whole. I don't want any one piece to seem isolated uh, and so here I'm just going to explore again all the sort of bits that make up the whole, uh, the whole design. Uh, I know I'm going to deal with a, a pretty large a broad sort of ship design. I already know that. Uh, and so, with the uh, with the monumental scale that I've got uh, for this ship, 
I can uh, now start defining the little, uh, the smaller pieces that go into uh, the overall design. Uh, and again, thinking of the whole anatomy of the ship, uh, you break it down as, uh, as little parts, basically. So here I am the, designing the uh, engine compartment. Um, and obviously the engine has to be quite large to push such a, uh, such a large vehicle uh, through space, um, or at least out of atmosphere. Uh, and then once, of course, into space, uh, it's, uh, again, sort of slowly trudging along, um, not going at beyond sonic or ultrasonic, if we will, uh, speed. But uh, so here we are again, just, uh, just breaking it up into pieces and um, know that I'm going to have to deal with uh, some sort of cargo. Uh, in this case, I'm thinking possibly there might even be air supply, because uh, why not? You know, it's sort of a precious commodity, air, uh, and certainly will be uh, as we uh, venture out into space. Uh, so here, here we are. Um, I'm going to need the uh, thinking of probably adding the uh, channels that will lead to the uh, air compartment, and all these little sort of things that you're adding to the overall design uh, will really hopefully if it's sort of grounded in some realism and that is to say if you're thinking of, of a purpose for it uh, it will help to uh, sell the believability of your design so really look to reality uh, and try and find ways to invest reality back into uh, these imagined uh, vehicles but um, it will just help the sellability and the, uh, the believability and again that will sell the uh, overall design and that's, that's what we're here for. So uh, cleaning things up as I go, but really just shape for shape, just trying to um, explore the, uh, the elements that make up this, uh, this freighter. And I'm also trying to make sure that every shape is sort of relating to the whole um, design. And that is to say that one line is not independent. They're all, they're all connected. They're all related. Uh, and going back to that sort of visual, the visual metaphors of a box being a, a slow sort of feeling shape, uh, you can see how I'm still sticking with that sort of boxy feel. Um, here I'm adding a bit of uh, satellite for communications as that is again going to be a, uh, a necessity uh, for the ship as uh, people in the um, control unit of this, uh, of this ship will obviously need to relay information back and forth to the areas that they're landing at and just just to make their job easier they're just going to need those things so starting to uh, add those bits uh, I know I'm going to need uh, some sort of cranes uh, they're great for scale and they just give an overall sort of industrial feel to this uh, ship design. And um, of course you've got the uh, blaster unit in the back uh, that is uh, going to give this uh, ship a, a defensive capability. So everything is all there, you know, sort of the checklist of uh, features have been um, been indicated, been, been sort of put down, resolved uh, in some way. So, and again, it didn't take any longer than you know, a couple of minutes. So. The objective is to really do a number of these, um, especially initially. You don't want to get sort of too precious or caught up with one. You just want to breeze through them and just pump them out as I say. And for this next exercise, I just want to really quickly uh, explain silhouette. Um, and I'm going to basically uh, reassess the drawing I just did. and double check myself, make sure that it in fact uh, is, uh, is floating, if you will. And uh, I'm going to just really go over with a broad tip, um, even marker, um, not full black, but dark gray, uh, and um, just fill in the areas, the positive uh, masses of my ship and uh, erase out the, uh, the negative spaces, and that is to say the areas uh, that are not the uh, ship where you can basically see through uh, into space. And um, 
just looking at it again, just shape for shape, and seeing how how everything is sort of coming together. And it looks like it's a uh, it's a pretty pretty sort of nicely uh, stated uh, little arrangement. Um, again, it's I'm not getting too bogged down by detail, and uh, I think everything being where they are and what they are, uh, it's a it's a fairly nicely constructed um, little arrangement. So I can uh, feel conf confident in passing this along as a as a working sort of concept. And I could uh, obviously refine it later, but it's so far holding water. With this next sketch, I'm going to use full two point perspective. Full two point perspective is a bit more complicated. Uh, and I will resort to this when I've got a pretty good sense of where I'm going with the design. So that's why I'll sort of, you know, minimize my perspective problems in the beginning uh, when I'm setting out to design these things and just use flats. I also want to um, point out that in breaking up uh, my convergence lines um, and uh, my midpoints, etc., uh, there tend to be um, sort of design uh, habits that arise from that that I am actually going to um, point out now and show you actually how I uh, will, will resort uh, to avoiding those things. And I've now pulled my ship away from that original um, uh, I guess box form um, and now that I have sort of my lines radiating where I want them on the page to establish my perspective I can kind of uh, sort of maneuver around um, those tendencies of breaking up my ship design within those sort of strict guidelines uh, which I want to again avoid uh, I want to have a sort of asymmetry uh, to the overall design of this ship and uh, again I want to I guess lean away from those uh, those exact sort of convergencies of, that the uh, the midpoint of the original box form would have uh, done to my design. So now I'm just basically adding those details, uh, those ing bits, those ingredients, if you will, uh, that are going to make up the. Uh, overall ship design. Um, figured out my perspective, pretty happy with that, and now I just want to um, arrange my major forms uh, in a uh, sort of, again, uh, a no, an arrangement that is going to sort of capture the attitude of my finished design. Uh, if, if, for the lack of a better word, that's sort of what I'm after, just getting the right attitude uh, with, these, uh, with these sketches. So, um, also um, indicating a separation now of the uh, individual elements, that is to say, I'm really now thinking about uh, the uh, engine compartment of this design um, and sort of trying things out, you know, just seeing what a, a sort of cir circular shape might look like in all those boxes uh, just for variety's sake. Um, now again bringing those shapes out of the design uh, but also considering the booster element as well that is to say that the uh, booster uh, the flare from the engine thrust uh, will have a, uh, a design to it as well, a look to it as well that is uh, definitely a part of this ship, so we're already starting to uh, consider that. Um, I know I'm going to need varying bits just to uh, break up the scale, the space, and inevitably those, will, those things will become lights, cranes, all things industrial ship. So again, like I say, you know, look, look to nature, uh, look to reality. Uh. 
So let me talk a little bit more about shape design and what I want you guys to do uh, with these thumbnails uh, at this very, very, very interim stage. Um, we're looking for an iconic abstraction to these designs. And once you have the parameters and the guidelines and, if you will, the overall sort of art direction to the project, um, then you know, you know what to push uh, and what contrasts you want to amplify within those parameters of your design world. Then you can play with those levels of contrast in your design. Uh, for instance, right now we're dealing with two ships, one being fast, one being slow, one being more defensive, I guess, and one being more offensive. Um, one's huge and massive, another one is tiny and small, another one is light, another one is heavy. So you can start seeing how um, ultimately in, in shape we can start really sort of connecting these dots and then pushing that shape design even further. Um, this spread here is, is primarily, uh, and again, hopefully, obviously, uh, fighter ships. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this spread here. And uh, one way to come up with something that, because it's, it's, you know, it's like, how do you know that that blob, for the lack of a better term, as you begin to lay down these marks on the page, they are just that. They are just blobs, smears, you know, dashes. But uh, inevitably, how can we get this arrangement of shapes um, to sort of connect, to resonate with us, the viewer, um, as to what it is? Uh, in design, we use a term, um, form follows function. And that's kind of a beautiful um, sort of universality to, to have as an approach and that is we all sort of can understand and get what things do by their design so if we get a sense of what these things need to do in our design world well then we'll sort of be able to push that as a designer better so really really familiarize yourself with what it is that your design task is you know what your problem your design problem is um, because again, as concept artists, it's our job to find uh, solutions to those design problems. And then inevitably, more eloquent solutions. But right now, we just need solutions, and that's what we're starting with. Uh, and then inevitably, we will refine and refine, and that's what we too is all about. We're going to take uh, the thumbnails that we like, and again, I stress, please do at least eight thumbnails per um, per vehicle type. Uh, I have students that easily brought in 40 uh, per uh, in previous classes and uh, really benefited <laughs> in the weeks following from that initial burst. Um, that person was, was very successful in, in, in turning out a, a very nicely rendered vehicle uh, by the third week because of that uh, initial uh, groundwork. So please, please, uh, you know, I emphasize that this is a very, very crucial time to sort of get it right. Uh, there's another saying uh, that we, we use as, as painters, uh, and that is to say that it's a, or excuse me, say the saying, a good start uh, will lead to a good finish. Um, and it's going to be very hard in the process uh, as you go about to uh, fix errors in a previous um, phase. So we want to sort of get everything up to snuff at the end of each phase. We want to compartmentalize the design process so that we can kind of check ourselves along the way and know that we're not straying too far off course. Um, but uh, it all starts again, like I say, with shapes. Shape, shape, shape. Inevitably, those forms become shapes, but first and foremost, really, really, we're looking for the iconic abstraction.